time for all your binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. Guys, we're back to talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Last night, we did a little bit of an after party, but we have the full recap today with none other than Ricky Cornish from Out Magazine. He joined us last week and everyone loved his energy, including me and Jason. Jason told me after, you always have to have Ricky do the New Jersey recaps. And I'm like, Jason, I get it, okay? And Because this was my idea. He always takes credit. Anyways, before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Now, let's welcome Ricky. What's Hi. up, Adam? So good to see you again. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Thank you for coming back. And I love how I told you the story right before we came on. But I was like, Jason, my husband, is over here taking all the credit. And I'm like, no, no, this is not your collab idea. But it's okay. Exactly. Listen, better late than never. I'm so glad that I could come back for round two because my goodness, it feels like every week we're going to have something to talk about when it comes to these Jersey women. I mean, it's just like the never ending saga for the Jersey women. What do you, I mean, let's just kick off with what did you think about this week's episode? Because there was a lot to talk about, especially with these two. Oh my goodness. When is there not something to talk about when it comes to Teresa and Melissa? Am I right? I'm actually excited because I think this episode, now that they've all traveled to the shore, you know, they're staying in separate houses. I feel like now we're finally going to see them talk about what's really going on up to this point. You know, they've just been seeing each other at events or parties or whatever it may be, but now they're on their first trip together. Now they're going to be spending a lot of time together. And I think naturally they're going to start talking about the things that are actually bothering them as opposed to the petty stuff we've seen so far. Absolutely. And it's wild. And I just want to, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but did you see the preview clip for next week? Girl, I literally just watched it right before I got on with you. And I was like, here we go. Now we're getting to the bottom of it. Okay, so now we're getting into the real drama that nobody wanted to spill behind the scenes. And I'm like, okay, we know that there are, there's a few things that mess up relationships, politics, religion, money. And when you start mixing family and business, that can be extremely problematic. I mean, we'll get into that, I guess, at the end. But when you saw it, were you more, who do you think is kind of telling the truth? I never know. I, this is what I personally think, and I'm so glad they showed this. Um, I'm glad they showed Teresa saying, I have kept my mouth shut for years, and I'm finally just going to start being honest. And I think now we're finally going to get into the nitty gritty of what's really been going on between Teresa and Joe for years, but especially recently. And I think one of the reasons why it hasn't gotten so bad is because I do think Teresa has kind of kept a muzzle on it when it comes to family stuff because she's always wanted to keep the family close. And as we know, she wasn't watching the show for the longest time, so she didn't know all the things that they were saying about her on the show. So now that she's caught up, she's finally watched the show, and she's at such a bad place with them, she just wants to be honest. I'm now really excited to see what Teresa has to say because I really am more on Teresa's side when it comes to this feud because I just personally feel like Teresa's been hiding a lot for so long. So now I think we're finally going to get an inside look as to what What's really going on with that family dynamic? You know, it's interesting because she has always claimed that she never watched the the show until recently. And Melissa said, that is not true. I know for a fact she's been watching the show this whole time. Who do you believe here? I believe Teresa because there would be times at the reunion when people would bring up things that Teresa said and Teresa wouldn't even remember saying it. Or there would just be these scenarios that they would reference to and Teresa would have no idea what they're talking about. Or like parties that they would talk about that Teresa didn't go to and she didn't even know about the party. So I think it's kind of obvious that Teresa up to this point has really just lived in her own world and hasn't felt the need to watch the show. Right. She's like, I lived it. I don't need to do it again, you know, and even when, do you remember back when they had to do like the blogs and stuff? Yes. I I believe she even had somebody writing her blog. She's like, I don't have time for this. I filmed for you guys. I'm not doing all of the pickup crap. Okay. Right. Well, I was going to say, I honestly don't blame the women if they don't watch it back because, yeah, they spend so much time filming and then to have to then watch it and relive it like you never really get a break from the show. And the show is exhausting, as we know. So I don't really blame them for being like, I don't really need to rewatch it. Like I lived it. I'm just going to stay in my truth. Absolutely. Now we kick off this episode with Danielle and Rachel and they're shopping for the luau. And seeing this dynamic is interesting because Jason asked me this last night. 
do you think that they're going to remain close? And I said, I feel like we're already seeing a divide. I feel like Danielle is leaning into Jennifer Aiden, Teresa Judice, and I feel like Rachel is leaning over here into like Melissa Gorga, Margaret Josephs. I don't know if they'll be able to maintain a friendship throughout that because I even thought it was wild that they brought on Danielle on her on Watch What Happens Live without Rachel and they put Rachel with Jen because I feel like if they were really in that good of standing, they would have brought on the two newbies, the two new housewives together. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I would have loved to see that. I actually really liked that they kicked off the episode with those two because I think they genuinely like each other, at least in the beginning. Like, I think we even saw, like, Rachel talk about her confessional. Like, me and Danielle have really bonded. I think Danielle's really funny. Like, I think Rachel and Danielle got off to a really great start. And I loved watching, actually, Rachel and Jen on Watch What Happens Live because Andy asked them, like, are you Team Teresa or Team Melissa? And they both were like, we don't do teams. Like, we're grown adults. Like, this is not really what, what we do. So even though it seems very obvious that Rachel's more friendly with Melissa and Danielle is more friendly with Teresa. I hope that doesn't really fracture their friendship because I actually like them together. I think they kind of bounce off of each other well, but I agree with you. I don't know if their loyalties to Teresa and Melissa might keep them from actually bonding any further. Absolutely. And then I, I found it interesting, the conversation that Danielle's having. I still have the conspiracy theory about her mentioning her brother enough where producers will want to bring on the brother and his wife. But she, Rachel brings this up, you know, you and Joe at the charity game were talking forever. What were you guys talking about? And it's like they were bonding over the disconnect that they have with their siblings. And I'm like, okay, I kind of feel like I know where this is going. But then we get into the Margaret Josephs of it all. And then this friend who's been doing a lot of interviews gets brought up, Laura, right? Right. So I just had Margaret Josephs on last week and I asked her about this. I got so much crap for it because... I was like, Margaret, how do you feel about Laura doing all of these interviews? And she's like, well, she's only doing interviews with low level people. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So some of the people who I've had on my channel before or who I've collabed with are some of the people who have done the interview. So boom, here goes Twitter blowing up. And I'm like, I'm not the one who said that. Right. I, I didn't repeat it. And you guys took the clip and started posting it on Twitter. This is not an Adam thing. <laughs> uh, Adam you know you got to be careful with these fans they will like follow everything so closely and they'll take their clips and they'll post it so you got to be careful but I mean hey you got that's what you got to expect from having Margaret on the show right you know she's gonna throw a little shade your way absolutely and you know they're talking and Danielle's like I just want to hear what how you would navigate this because Danielle's like I went into this, I'm going into, you know, navigating all of these different relationships by just trying to form my own opinion. However, when you have your closest friend from elementary school, middle school, whatever it is, and she's saying that you're notorious for dropping these bombs, and then Teresa saying it to me, Jennifer Aiden saying it to me, it makes me really think about it. And Rachel's like, I don't like to shit talk. I really just want to form my own opinion. Now for you, if you're going into a new friend group, Mind you, you have to be around these people. You're filming a TV show. Are you going to go in and with blinders and be like, I don't want to hear your outside noise. I want to just form my own opinion. Or are you going to lean in with caution based off of everything you've been told and try to navigate your own relationship and see how that's going to work for you? I would definitely try and find like the balance between the two. Cause I think for me, if I was joining a show like this, where there's already relationships that have been formed, this friend group has already gone through a lot together. And I was the new one coming onto the scene. I would definitely do my research, meaning like watch the show back, like see what the friendship dynamics are already like. Cause I personally don't like walking into a situation completely blindsided or like not knowing exactly what I'm getting myself into. Like I kind of like having a pulse as to what's going on. So I would want to know kind of what's going on but at the same time just because two friends in the group are fighting I'm not gonna let that dictate my friendship with them like I still want to build my own relationship with people because you know that's not really fair to go into a friendship a friend group and just automatically not like somebody because I've seen them feuding with somebody else over their own personal stuff so I would definitely go in like with my own you know intuition and kind of just do my own thing but I also would want to know a little history just so I know exactly what I'm getting myself into here. I don't want to get burned if by not doing my own research and not knowing what I'm getting myself into, you know? I always say I won't put my hand on the stove twice. Like if you get me, okay, you got me once. You're not getting me twice. And usually if you get me, I mean, this is old Adam, but I would, I would be like, okay, like housewives mode. Like if you get me, then I feel like I got to get you. Yeah. Now I'm just like, ugh. 
get lost. I don't want to get you. I just want you to get lost. But I get it. I get how these women have to navigate these relationships because at the end of the day, like Dolores said, we all have to go on trips together. We're around each other constantly, whether the trips are out of the country or whether they're at the Jersey shore, we have to be in the same place. So you need the conflict, but you also need the resolution, right? Totally. And I think it's a good thing that they're kind of going back and forth. If anything, I kind of wish Rachel and Danielle would become a little bit of a duo. I know for me, I would actually love it if I was entering a show like this and I wasn't the only newbie. Like I could also talk to somebody else and be like, so what do you think about this feud? Like, is it really that bad? Like, who are you kind of like leaning toward? Like, it would make me feel a little less alone in terms of being so green with the whole group. So I have hopes for Rachel and Danielle, but yeah, I don't know because they pick different sides of the fence. I don't know how long that's actually going to last. I totally agree. Now, speaking of picking different sides of the fence, we have Jennifer Aiden and Teresa Judice who are going to the jewelry store. And I don't know how many jewelry stores this woman has in her family, but she has them and I'm not mad at it. So we go to the jewelry store and we're trying to find some bridesmaids gifts. All right. Well, while we are, the conversation of the shore comes up and Teresa's just talking about, listen, don't you think it's a little messed up because my brother and Melissa, they invited Margaret to go stay with them. Like, why wouldn't you invite me and Louie to come stay with you? Why would you invite Margaret? And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, Joe didn't show up to your housewarming. He hasn't been around. He's clearly been trying to avoid you. Why would you think that he would be inviting you to stay at his shore house? That To me, it just didn't register. And you're not inviting Melissa's family to your wedding. They're obviously going to be there. It didn't make too much sense. What did you make of it? I completely agree. I honest, I love, I love Teresa, but I kind of eye rolled at that a little bit. I was like, Teresa, you're not even really speaking to these people. Do you really think they're going to invite you? And Margaret and Melissa and Joe, they're real friends. I mean, they really hang out. They actually talk. So it only makes sense to me that Melissa and Joe would invite Margaret um, to stay with them. Like that just makes sense. Like I understand that, you know, they're at a place right now where they're kind of tit for tatting every little thing, like anything that one person does to hold against them. It feels like they're doing when it comes to Teresa and Melissa. So I understand where Teresa might want to bring that up as like another point of evidence as to why there's this, this divide. But at the same time, just kind of speaking realistically here, like if I was going on a trip with someone who's in my family, but we don't really speak, we're not that close. And someone I consider to be a very good friend of mine is coming. I would naturally, invite that person i would want to invite the people to stay with me that i naturally hang out with all the time so i kind of see where Teresa's coming from but at the same time i don't think it's a really valid argument here <laughs> you're like i don't know about that and it is wild to see the dynamics when it comes to going to the shore because now jennifer and bill have a shore house first of all when she said i kept the sheets i'm like no girl did you watch jersey shore you get rid of the sheets keep the bed frame i don't even know about keeping the mattress keep the chairs keep the table don't keep the sheets and she's like right no, no. listen oh i love a furnished moment okay i would love the idea of getting a shore house and everything comes with sign me up like that's great but I, for, I hate to say it. I thought the furniture was tacky. I thought that shore house was not cute. And then, yeah, when she said that she kept the sheets and stuff, I'm like, you got the money. You can easily go and buy some nice new sheets for this new shore house that you just got. So I under, I kind of related to Jennifer in the moment being like, I kept the furniture. I don't care. I'm like, I love that. But like, it's kind of ugly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. So. <laughs> on, I mean, I think I'm going to defend Jennifer Aiden here for a second. What I feel like we have here is a moment of we bought a shore house. I convinced my husband because I'm thinking you don't spare. You have 16 bathrooms. You had to buy 16 trash cans, 16 floor mats, 16 shower curtains, 16 bathrooms, right? Or maybe not 16 shower curtains because I'm sure some are half baths. But my point is my point. But for this house, maybe they looked at it like an investment property. And as you can see, Bill was like, yeah, usually at two o'clock in the morning, the fights are right over there. You can hear them there. And I'm like, oh, you guys are legit on the boardwalk. I'm wondering if this is just like a vacation rental for them. And then when they're not renting it out, they'll go stay in it. And they just know that people are coming there to party and they're going to F up the place. Whereas like we know Missy G's is not up for rental. Totally. Well, and plus at the end of the day, how many years in a row have they gone to the shore house as one of the trips that they go on? Like, and Jennifer and Bill, I think have rented a house every year. So it makes sense that they would finally just be like, listen, like, if we're going to be on the show, we're going to keep going. Like, let's just buy a house. Like, it totally makes sense. And yeah, I totally get that. They're like, well, let's just buy the house because we go every summer to film the show. It is what it is like, but we won't really renovate it. Like, I completely understand that. But 
I couldn't help but think it. Like as they were doing the little tour, I was like, Jennifer, this house is not that cute. But listen, this is coming from somebody who has no sense of style. Literally my decor options are hideous. So I really shouldn't be like throwing rocks. Like it's coming from a glass house, 100%. But I got to be honest, I just thought it looks a little rough. <laughs> that doesn't mean you can't appreciate other design aspects, right? And yeah. I did think it was great when like Jennifer's trying to put together, like as Danielle's arriving, she's trying to put together this little plate. She's like spilling the shit all over the table. And then Danielle walks up and she's like, hey, welcome to the shore house. And I, I thought for Danielle, she's probably like, oh, this is really cute. You got a house on the shore. And then I'm thinking, the hell is Teresa going to think when she walks in this house? Oh, my gosh. Tell me about it. Well, especially because Jennifer's house in Paramus, oh, my God, like stunning. I mean, it's like a mansion. It's so beautiful. So we know the girl's got a sense of style for sure. And she's got good decor options. Um, but, yeah, I kind of thought the same thing. Well, you know whose house I actually love that we got to see for the first time was Rachel Fuda's. I thought her house was so cute and i love when um dolores walked up and just left her bags at the front and rachel brought them into the house i'm like <laughs> so since you brought dolores up this is a great a great question for you because dolores i just had a, an amazing conversation with her and paul learned so much about paul and his story is incredible coming from ireland really just building himself up and creating everything that he has for himself i mean i have so much respect for that and I was like, Dolores, tell me, would you guys get married on camera? I just wanted to know. You know, some people mm -hmm. like to be private. Some people like the bells and whistles. I don't know. And Dolores, pretty, or Dolores is pretty, like, chill. So I felt like it was a fair question. But she's like, I'm going to stay with Rachel. Normally, I would stay at Frank's house. But because I'm in this new relationship, we're creating healthy boundaries. Now, Frank's girlfriend, Brittany, even wonders, like, Dolores, like I'm here with Frank. It's not a big deal. Like we're kind of wondering, is this Polly's doing? And Dolores doesn't even want to have this conversation. She's like, stop making it a thing. Frank, you're making it about yourself. I, I'm not even having this conversation. My point is we're creating healthy boundaries. I wanted to stay at Rachel's. Paul is not with me right now. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Why are you making it one? How do you feel? Yeah, totally. I think it's unfair that um, Frank and Brittany are kind of like, telling Dolores, like, we really would love for you to stay. Like, I think if it was up to Dolores, she would probably like that too. I mean, she loves Frank. She loves Brittany. She's only doing this because Paul doesn't want to do this. She's only doing this because Paul wants to be around Dolores and keep her to himself. So it's not really fair to like go up to Dolores and be like, yo, why are you doing this? Like, why can't you stay with us? She's like, listen, I am literally just doing this for my relationship. Like I'm doing this to create a healthy boundary. So I feel like giving Dolores a lot of slack for it really isn't fair because as we see, Dolores is getting sick of it as it is. Like, I don't really think anything's going to come from them. Like, kind of berating her and being like, why don't you spend more time with us? Why didn't you stay with us? Like, you're just going to upset the girl and you're going to get Patterson Dolores if you keep doing that, which I'm all here for. We love a Patterson Dolores moment. But at the same time, like, leave the girl alone. She's only doing this because this is what Paul wants. I do love a Patterson Dolores moment. <laughs> and I I mean, I never got to see her bite through the girl's nail, but <laughs> I, I would pay to be a fly on the wall to see some of those moments from the past. And I agree. I feel like at this point, we know this and Frank knows this more than anyone. I mean, you have children with this, uh, grown children, but children with this woman or woman, you know that Dolores, she didn't like when you talked about Dr. David. She doesn't like when anyone brings up her relationship because she has loyalty and she's going to protect the person she's with. She, you could tell she just like leans in with, if this is my person, I'm riding for you. And I'm like, oh, Frank, you got to back off. And when she starts walking away and he's like, fix it, Dolores. You need to fix it. I'm like, Frank, do you want to get one of those tiki torches thrown at your head? You want a Leah McSweeney moment from New York? What are you doing? Yeah, honestly, I saw some really shady tweets that I kind of loved. People are like, Frank is only acting up and doing this to keep his spot on the show. And I was like, ooh, like, his people are like, listen, if Dolores goes all in with this relationship, why would Frank even really come around? It's like, Britney's not on the show, right? So people right. are like... I think Frank is trying to do this just to maintain like a sense of interest from the fan base to keep him on the show. And listen, like the men have been around for a long time at this point. They know how this show works. They know what's interesting and what keeps the fans like tuned in. I wouldn't be surprised if Frank is bringing up these problems on camera 
for a reason. And let's be honest, it's giving Dolores a storyline because if it wasn't for this, what would Dolores really have going on right now? You know, so I hate to kind of watch the show like that. It's like, is this real? Is this not? Because I think that kind of takes the fun out of it. Like, just enjoy the show. But at the same time, you can't help but wonder, like, is Frank kind of egging Dolores on as an ulterior motive here? Like, I don't know. It's just food for thought, I think. Absolutely. And I think, too, when you have even like... I, 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 who was maybe it was Sheena I was talking to about this, but even the people who are on reality TV, they can't watch reality TV anymore without picking it apart, knowing, oh, you guys had to redo that scene. Oh, this is probably what happened. It kind of takes the magic out of it. And then I feel like for us doing a lot of the interviews and stuff like that, you're like, what is really going on here? It's like, you're not just like some, some woman who works in finance, who's never been around like TV or some man who's just like sitting there, you know, just doing his everyday job and does, you know, goes home and watches this for an hour and is like, oh, this is my guilty pleasure. Like, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to just like, okay, don't ruin this for yourself, Ricky. You don't want to do that. But I want to mm -hmm. get back over to Jennifer and Bill for a second because Bill tries to communicate a little bit. <laughs> this was a little bit of a joke. And I see, I get Jennifer's point now. She's like, listen, this is exactly what happens. They're discussing therapy and how they should communicate. And she's like, this is why we don't communicate. He talks in circles. And he's like, we just need to move on. We just need to love each other. She's like, yeah, no shit. If we loved each other, you wouldn't have snuck off in the first place. Now this is the problem that has fallen into our laps. So we have to talk about it. And you don't want to talk about it. And when you do, you dance in circles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts? I Yeah, this whole situation is getting very interesting because I feel like every time they think they're taking one step forward, it's like becoming two steps back. Like, I feel like every time they try communicating, they realize they don't, they're not like agreeing on a few things. And it's getting like a little bit like, it's getting worse. If you ask me, I feel like in a way, every time they try and bring it up, you could tell Bill is just so uninterested. I think if it was up to him, he would just be drunk all the time and crawling like we saw in this episode. Like, I think he would rather be doing that than actually having these conversations with Jennifer on camera. I give the man credit because he is going to therapy, not only therapy with Jen, he's going to therapy with her on camera. So the yeah. viewers are getting to watch this as well. So I give Bill credit for that. I think at the end of the day, Bill feels really, really bad that he ever cheated on Jennifer. And I also think he feels really bad that it got out there, not only because of his own reputation, but because of the kids, the kids found out about it as well. Like that affects their whole family dynamic. So I think Bill is just struggling with the guilt that he has over the whole thing. And the fact that Jennifer is there to kind of remind him about it and to try and fix things, I think is like triggering him a little bit. And I think that's why he wants to just shut it down constantly. Like, let's just move on. I just want to be in a good place because I still think he feels a little bad about everything that's happened, you know? As you should. Definitely. Yeah, I know. It's like, you did it, Bill. So you got to kind of deal with the consequences. You did it, Bill. So now you got to pay the bill. Another yellow canary diamond, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right, right. No, I'll take a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, the other one was stolen. Take the insurance money, or I don't know if they got it back or what. And then buy her a Ferrari because you work all day and then you come home. She's with all 500 of your children. Then you come home and hide in the pool house, like, or one of the 16th bathrooms. I, I, I don't even know what the hell Bill's doing. I would take the Ferrari and be like, listen, we don't even have to communicate. Let's just operate and get through this, raise our kids if we're not going to last. Let's give them a happy home. Let them go out. And then I will take you for half of everything. You get eight bathrooms. I get eight bathrooms. Let's call it a day. Yeah, right. Could you imagine they just split the house right down the middle? Like that would be an interesting divorce settlement. <laughs> yeah, just build a wall. Yeah, exactly. It's like New York City where like when you get a one bedroom apartment, you turn it into two bedroom and they put like those little fake walls in the middle. Yeah, it sounds good to me. I think they can make it work. If anyone can make it work, it's Jennifer Aiden. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lisa Randall, that's a great point too. You really think he only cheated once? LOL, what a joke. See, that's the thing. It's like once you've opened up the can, it it's hard to tell. Like we're literally watching this with the scan of all of it all. I, I want to go over to Margaret. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say really quick um, on top of that. Remember what was a few seasons ago? A clip popped up on my TL and I completely forgot about it when Margaret said like, yeah, you don't know where Bill is. If he's sleeping with his girlfriend in the pool house or something like that. And Jennifer got so triggered right away. Like, it's so obvious. Like, you know how she was like, what was it last season? I haven't thought about the affair until up until this season. When in a few seasons ago, Margaret literally made a joke or came for Jennifer about Bill cheating. And she got so defensive. Like, it's definitely obvious that there's been other things brewing that we haven't really seen all that much. So remember, I she's like, more food for thought, people. She's like, you shut the fuck up with that. Exactly. Like, Ooh. Hit a nerve. <laughs> yeah, hit a nerve. 
Speaking of Margaret, Margaret's mother is invited to the wedding. <laughs> what? I mean, listen, March Sr., I always, every time I see Margaret, the first, in the first two questions, it's like, how are you? How is Marge Sr.? And then I go into how is Joe? I always ask about Marge Sr. because she lives her best life. She goes over to New York City. She's dancing in bars. She's just like social, meeting people. I want to live vicariously through Marge Sr. But Marge Sr., obviously, Teresa knows she's a party. She's a good time. So she got invited to the wedding. However, now this brings us to the point that she got invited to the wedding, but Melissa Gorga's mother and sisters did not. Before we actually got into the tweets of it all, what were your what was your initial reaction? Uh, like this just gets more and more messy, I feel like, by the episode. I think it's one of those things where, okay, do you know what I keep thinking of? I keep thinking of the Chanel Ion of it all. Who was um Teresa on FaceTime with? Chanel was like at lunch with some with some house. So it might have been Dorinda, I want to say, or something like that. And then Dorinda was like, oh my God, I'm on FaceTime with Teresa and panned it to Chanel. And Ayan was like, oh my God, I'm such a fan. Like I'm in New York. I love you. And Teresa was like, well, just come to the wedding. Like we would love to have you. So she invited a stranger to the wedding. Okay. So it feels like to me. Teresa's was not that hardcore on who was coming to the wedding. I mean, she invited a ton of housewives. She invited Chanel, who she doesn't even know. Like, I don't think she was that serious. So when she threw out the invite to Marge Sr., that's immediately what I thought of. So I'm sure there were a few other people that Teresa just kind of invited willy-nilly. So in that aspect, I was like, okay, this invite isn't that deep because Teresa's really inviting anybody to this wedding. But at the same time, I get where it comes from, Melissa. It's like, girl, you're literally inviting anybody at this point, yet you refuse to invite my family. So it's one of those things where I don't think Teresa meant to hurt Melissa or her family by inviting Marge Sr. But at the same time, I get why Melissa's like, girl, like if you're going to invite all these people, why can't you just invite my mom? I mean, this is what this is what like kills me with these two, because I get both sides. I am the person like I have the a little bit of Teresa in me where it's like, if you talk about me, I'll move on. I'll never forget it. And just because I move on doesn't mean that it's going to be all cotton candy. I'll, I'll see you. I'll be cordial. Hi, how are you? You doing good? Huh? Great. I'll be like that. But I don't need to be like the friendliest. And you're not my in-laws. You're Joe's in-laws. But then I get Melissa's side where she's like, that was at you know, around the time of the christening. This was so long ago when they first started the show. I mean, Joe had hair. Okay. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. Joe had hair and Melissa didn't even start doing her lips or anything yet. This was a long time. She was still trying to sing. She had a whole career on the horizon. She was the next Ariana Grande. Like yeah. things were happening. So it was a long time ago. Can we not move on? Yes, we need to do a bigger deep dive on the relationship that Teresa has with Melissa's mom and specifically Teresa's parents with Melissa's mom. Because when they showed those tweets, I was like, 2012, 11 years ago, like that's a long time ago. And then remember, they showed that little montage earlier in the season of Melissa's mom, like walking with Teresa's dad. And like they had like a little bit of a relationship. Like, I would love to get more information on that because if Teresa's really not inviting them just over some tweets that are over 10 years old, when in reality, um, you know, if Teresa's or if Melissa's mom was really helping with Teresa's dad or like if they had a friendship, they had a relationship. At the end of the day, here's the thing, Teresa, like if you're going to be walking around and throwing invites, honestly, to random people, you must know deep down that that's you, you might feel a little strange by not inviting Melissa's mom. And I think the fact that Louie didn't even have to do a lot of convincing at the shore to say, listen, I really think that we should invite her. And Teresa's like, all right, like, do you want to? Like, I think Teresa just really doesn't like care all that much. I mean, the fact that she was like, yeah, I mean, if you want to go invite her and then Louie's trying to go chase her down to invite her. I mean, like, you can't make this stuff up. Like, it's so crazy. Um, so I think at the end of the day, Teresa, I think deep down knows that she could have invited Melissa's mom and that she probably should have, but she's holding on to anything she can to make it look like she shouldn't have invited her. When in reality, it's just not that deep. I agree with that. And I also feel like too, I mean, call me petty. I can be petty, Betty. That's fine. And I feel like a wedding like this, if I didn't like you <laughs> and I just know that I'm going to have this over the top wedding with like 10 cameras there, I'm going to have the best home video. It's literally like a million dollar wedding, right? I mean, we had a $10,000 hairdo. We had a $10,000 hairdo. I have it right here. Mm -hmm. What was it like 10,000 bobby pins? Clock yeah. that. Okay. So my question is, 
is wouldn't you want to flex the hell out of this and be like, oh, you guys are here? Like, I wouldn't even pay them any mind. I would just be like, just come and see how much I'm winning. Come see my wedding. See everybody who's here. This is, you thought BravoCon was something to see? Oh, wait till you come to my wedding. You know? It was like a mini BravoCon. Exactly. I'm just in the mindset of, right. Like, I'm one of those, like, if you're going to have an intimate wedding, have an intimate wedding. Or if you're going to have a TV show wedding and you're going to have all these people there, then it doesn't even really matter who's there. Then just invite the mom. Who cares? She had a good relationship with your dad. It's like you said, you're probably not even going to see her at the wedding because there's so many people at this wedding anyway. You're going to be so caught up with the filming of it all. Just focus on that. Who cares who comes to the wedding at the end of the day? As long as you have a good time. Well, you're Italian, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. So... Did Louis mess up by not talking with Teresa before he went over and said to Melissa's mom, I'm sorry, you know, I'm the middle man. I didn't, you know, I don't have pretty much. He's saying, I don't have a dog in this fight. You know, we, I, I I think you're great. And she's like, I wish he would have talked to me about that first. Is that a no, no? I mean, I personally didn't think it was the biggest deal in the world. And as we've seen in the past, Louis has no problem doing his own thing without Teresa's permission. Remember the reunion? He was forgiving Margaret, going up to her, hugging, kissing her. And Teresa was not about that, like was so mad about that. I think Louis doesn't care enough about Teresa's opinion to still do his own thing. I think if Teresa made it like full blown, like do not speak to her at the shore, like that whole thing, then I'm sure Louis would have maybe done things a little bit differently. But I think given the fact that they didn't even have a conversation about it, like you can't blame Louis for like running into her, saying hello and saying, hey, listen, like it's the elephant in the room, right? It's like, I'm saying hello to this woman, but she knows we didn't invite her to the wedding. Like, you might as well just, like, cut the tension and say, listen, I'm sorry we didn't invite you. Like, it wasn't my decision. Like, happy to see you, though. I think that's just a nice thing to do. So I don't think Teresa should really get too upset about that. Like, Louie's going to do what Louie's going to do. At first, I'm like, you're kind of throwing her under the bus. But then it's like, well, he made a good point. He's like, that's your situation. That's 10 years of history before I even got here. I don't, that's not a me thing. And I was like, all right. All right, we'll give you a pass on this one. But I, I want to keep it moving too because there there was a moment that we saw last night where I feel like, well, there were a couple moments. We had Rachel get hazed a little bit and we had her husband get hazed. But for <laughs> Rachel, she really got a taste of what it's like to be on the housewives. She took a conversation that she had with Teresa. She took a conversation that she had with Danielle and she brought it right back and dropped it in Margaret's lap. And she's like, I just want to tell you that even Danielle said that you have an arsenal of information that you could potentially use against everyone. And Teresa said that you make a better friend than you do an enemy. And she's like, what the fuck is that? It's undermining my character. And I think Rachel thought, oh, I'm planting a seed and I'm sure it'll <laughs> it'll come up as a storyline. And Margaret's like, no, girl, watch this. <laughs> Teresa, I have something to say to you. And Rachel's sitting there, her eyes get all big and whatnot. She's like looking like, um... <laughs> What's going on? Right, right. Yeah. She's like bright-eyed, like, uh, it, even at one point, I think she was like, I need to go get a drink. And she's like, why would you tell her that, you know, to kind of be careful of me? And Teresa's like, I don't like that shit. Mm-hmm. I was talking to her. And honestly, you don't want to mess with any of us. And I was just telling her we were having a conversation. There was nothing wrong with it. I do like you, Margaret. Margaret's like, don't be fake with me. I don't want to do fake this year. She's like, I'm not being fake. I'm in my love bubble. (laughs) What did you think about this? You know, the only thing that would have made this scene better is if Danielle was right there too. Because hello, Danielle and Rachel both went back to Margaret and told Margaret that's what Teresa said. So I didn't really love that Rachel was the only one catching heat from Teresa about it because Danielle did the exact same thing. So if you're going to be mad at like Rachel for telling Margaret, what you said about Margaret, you should carry that same energy over to Danielle. But Danielle wasn't there in that moment. So I was bummed about that because I feel like Rachel was kind of like a deer in headlights. Like, oh, God, like I didn't realize I like did something here. Whereas if Danielle was there, too, it would have been like, yeah, no, they both said this to me. Like, it was obvious that whatever you said, Teresa, struck a nerve or was notable because two people repeated what you said to me. Um, I thought that scene was honestly kind of stupid. I'm not going to lie. Like, when Margaret was like, this is undermining my character, I was like, girl, shut up. Like, literally, Teresa is just saying you're a better friend than an enemy. She's not attacking your character. Like, come on. Um, and then Teresa saying, I think you're causing a problem. I was like, these ladies are acting. Okay. They know the camera is on them and they are making this a moment because this is so dumb. Even the thing that Rachel and Danielle repeated was not that bad. And I don't think Teresa said it maliciously either. I was like, this is kind of silly here. 
Right. And then you see, I love how they're trying to have the conversation. Like you said, like the acting of it all, they're trying to have the conversation. Then you hear like the guys chanting food, uh, food. Uh. And Teresa's like, we can't even talk. Like you guys are ruining our filming. We're not here for a party. It's a fake party. It's like, it's like when you, it's like when you're on the bachelor, you don't eat the food. What are you doing? But like, you don't have the real party. Joe's like, Oh, we're going to have a real party. And Teresa's like, mm -hmm. we're filming a fucking show, Joe. Exactly. Well, hey, speaking of food, did you see the cannoli bar at that party? <sighs> that made oh me my so God. hungry right now. I mean, I'm literally, I'm on a juice diet right now. So I was looking at the food. I'm looking oh. at like the bread shaped in like Gorga and then the lobster bread. I'm like, I don't even, I just want, I, I wanted to rip apart all of it. It looks so good. No, literally, I was watching the episode last night with my best friend and, you know, we're talking about the show as it's airing. And then I literally stopped the conversation. I was like, was that a cannoli bar they just showed? I didn't even know those existed. And so seeing that, I love cannolis. It's like my favorite thing in the world. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, if there's one thing about Jersey, they will eat and they will eat good, okay? <laughs> I actually, to be fair, I like sweets. I've never tried a cannoli. Adam, you are missing out. You are missing out. Do you have a sweet tooth? Like, do you like sweets? Some Well, yeah, the problem is I like them too much. So once I start, I can't stop. I'm like a monster. I'm, I'm a tyrant. Listen, you need to indulge just for one day. I don't know what it's like where you're at, where the best cannoli shop would be. But listen, especially if you're ever on the East Coast, that's where the good cannolis are out. So if you ever go back up to New York or you're in Jersey or whatever, you have to get a cannoli. Boston apparently has some of the best. So just tit for tit, like a little info for you. If you're ever trying to get a cannoli, that's where you should go. That's where I'm going to go. Yes. Well, speaking of, you said that the ladies eat, you know, Jack <laughs> Goldschneider... <laughs> What? So why are you laughing at that? The ladies eat. It's true. The <laughs> ladies. I like that the ladies eat. I like that we're not pushing our little cherry tomatoes around on the plate. Like, oh, this is so good. I'm full. Right. You know, and then going and running into Dorit's bathroom. I like that. <laughs> so for this moment, you know, the ladies eat. Right. But Jackie Goldschneider just recently did an interview talking about I'm, you know, fearful for some of the housewives, especially some of the ladies on my cast this year, I noticed that the women weren't eating because of Ozempic. And it just makes me really nervous because after they get off Ozempic, they're going to gain a lot of weight. I'm like, who all is on Ozempic now? Is everybody on Ozempic? What the hell is going on? I had no idea. I didn't even know Jackie said that. And the only reason I know a little bit about what you're talking about is because Jen Fessler said on Watch What Happens Live that she lost weight because she's on Ozempic. By the way, I thought she looked fabulous. I thought the facelift and the nose job looked great on Jen Fessler. Like just, I think she looks great. But yeah, I didn't. I don't even know what that's about. I don't know the Ozempic treatment of it all. Like, I don't know what that's about. I always feel bad when people feel the need to lose weight. I think that's the one thing that really messes with these women or people in general when they go on reality TVs. I think they get so in their head about their looks, like just naturally. And then it doesn't help if you have people online who are commenting on their looks or making fun of them or whatever. So I always feel a little sad for them when they feel the need to like change their appearance a lot. But at the same time, if that's what makes you feel good, great as long as you're healthy that's the only thing so i kind of see where jackie's saying there like you don't want to develop unhealthy habits just to look a certain way no i i completely agree with that and you know it is sad but unfortunately this is like no pun intended the reality of being on reality tv it's just like everybody i mean melissa gorga did an interview the other day when someone asked her it wasn't the other day it was like two weeks ago when she mentioned Teresa's forehead and i'm like oh you guys do not you obviously don't want to make amends here because we wouldn't, we wouldn't be blasting out Teresa's forehead, but she's like, we all get something done. Even Jackie, when she had her teeth and they were like this big before, after she saw herself on her first season, she went and got new teeth. Like we all do something. And I'm like, it kind of great if that's what you do and you do it for yourself because it's something you've always wanted. But then when you have fans who are picking you apart and comparing you to some of the other women who have been on the show for five years, they know the glam of it all. They know their angles. They have work done. It really... You know, sometimes it is unfortunate, but guys, you signed up, you get paid a lot of money. I'm my sympathy. My little violin just went that far for you. Yeah, no, I'm, exactly. I'm, so, I'm right there with you on that one. 100%. Well, and since we mentioned, by the way, Rachel Fuda kind of getting haze, what did you think about her husband in this waxing kit? First of all, you came into the wolf pack, man, and you brought diapers. You asked for this. Mm hmm. If there's anything you can guarantee from the men, they're going to give you stupid fun. OK, like the things that they do are so dumb, but they're fun, you know, and I love that the show kind of maintains that a little bit. I think you need that healthy balance of 
yes, we love our drama. We love our fights. We love all that. But just to see that there is some fun that they're having at the end of the day is really nice. And I think the husbands bring that really well when it comes to this show. Like they just are there to have a good time. And so I thought it was really funny. And especially because that wax job was awful. I was like, what? Why are we going like angles and we're doing like X's? I'm like what? What are we trying to achieve with this wax job? Uh, but I thought it was silly and I thought it was fun. And um, I think that stuff is just always nice to see. Well, we turned it into an X. Did you see Joe Gorga's Instagram? No. What did he post? Oh, okay. I'm sharing it with you right now. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. We had the X for a reason. <laughs> this is the X, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Remember the bow and arrow? No, I actually don't remember. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. Oh, wait for it. Joe's a monster. I love it. I mean, it's kind of awful, but. Gets a hundred dollar bill. And you get your picture on the Gorga wall at the pool house. It's the X. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, he's awful. Awful. And then, of course, I mean, such an instigator here. Count, ready? Count. Let's see. Yeah, okay, yeah. No. Food up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go, Mike. What happened, happened, Bill? You all right? Poor Bill. Oh, my goodness. Bill is an easy target. Easy target. I got to tell you, like, the little, like, inner gay kid in me is terrified of people like Joe Gorga. Like, if I were to, like, go to a house party and see these macho men doing all this stuff to the other men i would like run in the bathroom and hide i'm like they're gonna kill me with these pranks like this is too much <laughs> yeah i mean it's kind of like a it's like a fraternity yeah definitely. yeah i almost said a sorority i didn't i i went to community college okay <laughs> we didn't have either one of those i felt like it, i'm just i was happy to just go to college period anyways getting period. back to it um I wanted to ask you about the jennifer aiden of it all because we see jennifer aiden and she's like let's get Stop. And I'm like, oh. and so was Bill. And this is not the first time that we see them crawling on the floor. We've yeah. seen this numerous times before. But Teresa, everybody's over in the corner talking, and Jackie's like, let me take this moment and go up to Jennifer Aiden and try to get her and her drunk self <laughs> after multiple shots to go talk to Margaret and make amends. I'm thinking in my head, Jackie. You are not landing the plane with anything this season, girl. You tried to sit there and check Danielle and tried to make a moment. You didn't get a moment. You tried to make a moment with Rachel Fuda. You're not getting a moment. And now you're inserting yourself into this Margaret Jennifer Aiden, which, yes, you should because you're on the show. But did you think that this was the best time when she's wasted pants? <laughs> no. Girl, this is a mess. Jackie is just not getting it this season. She completely misunderstood the assignment. I would understand like if maybe Jen Fessler or somebody that's new to the group or Rachel or Danielle, anybody went up to Jennifer Aiden and said, listen, like I know you and Margaret just had that thing, but I think you guys can get along. Jackie, you have been around for years. You see that Jennifer and Margaret literally cannot stand each other. And anytime they try and make resolution it never works like never. they always fight so you of all people should know that it's a complete waste of time and energy to try and tell jennifer aiden especially when she's drinking that you should make up with margaret i just don't even understand where the inspiration of that conversation came from also why is jackie like really trying to become so friendly with jennifer i thought they really didn't get along to begin with either so why is jackie even really taking it upon herself to have this conversation i will say like i like seeing jennifer like kind of confide in jackie a little bit about the whole bill thing of it all and that just shows the alcohol jennifer, right it just shows that jennifer is a real housewife because she yeah even if she was drinking she's talking about it but it's not like she's really hiding anything either she's going to therapy with bill she's doing it all like she's showing it all um but yeah i just don't get what jackie was trying to do there either i'm like girl what are we doing i'm just i'm just confused by her no and i i think honestly for jennifer she shouldn't be embarrassed about anything she kept her family together she's not the one who stepped out so if i were her i would just be like yeah he's an asshole i'm mm -hmm. trying to save my family we're trying to communicate about this and it's not the easiest thing. She will 
remain on the show and maintain longevity as long as she's open and honest about those conversations and not trying to hide things. She hid things for way too long in order to protect her family. Margaret opened the door and now she's like, I tried to protect you, Bill. Sorry, it's out there. But speaking again of Jackie not landing the plane, we have another moment and Jackie mm -hmm. is bringing up the whole Danielle of it all and she's calling bullshit on Danielle's story. And she's saying, I just don't think, I think that there's more to the story. She's also calling her a bootleg snooky, pretty much. <laughs> but she's saying, I'm not buying this story about the brother. Like something is not right. Dolores did another interview and she said, Jackie needs to worry about her sister. Okay. Her own sister. She doesn't need to be worrying about Danielle. And I was like, Oh, Dolores from Patterson entered the conversation. And Teresa said, it's not bullshit because listen, Italians hold grudges. I'm like, I'm not Italian, but Ricky is. And he's joining us tomorrow at 1 PM. I'm going to ask him. What are your thoughts? Okay. Let me just say that Jackie is just wearing me out. I'm sorry. Like I like her. I've always liked Jackie, but I am so bored of what she's trying to do. And I completely, this just shows, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be shady, but this just shows how memorable her storylines are. I completely forgot that she had a sister that she didn't speak to. Like, I completely forgot about that. So when that was brought up, I was like, oh yeah, like whatever happened with that? And the fact that Dolores in that interview, that post show recap interview was like, yeah, do we know exactly what happened with that sister? Do we know re why they fell out? No, none of us do. So why is Jackie prying so much for Danielle to be more honest about the situation. Jackie's never been fully honest about her situation. Plus, at the end of the day, why do you care, Jackie? It's none of your business. Like, why are you so hardcore? And then, yeah, starting to, like, come for her and calling her the snooky and all that stuff is so crazy. But um, to answer your question about grudges, I personally am not somebody who likes to hold... Well, this is just me talking. I can't really speak for Italians in general. But I think for me personally, I don't like to hold a grudge because that, that just wears me down. Um, I'm walking around in my daily life hating somebody or being angry towards somebody. That's not helping me at all. I'm very much one of those, like, I want resolution. Um, but I'm kind of like you, where if we come to resolution and we agree to disagree, or if they apologize and I forgive you, I'm not going to become best friends with you the next day. Like, I need some time to, like, move forward after whatever happened, happened. Um, so I don't do the best at forgetting things as well. Time, I think, does heal all wounds. Um, but for me personally, like, I'm not one to hold a grudge because I just think it, it just, it's exhausting to be honest with you. I don't have the energy to hold a grudge against somebody. <laughs> I know it, it really is exhausting. And then when you're so busy, it's like, I don't have time to play this with you. But I think for Jackie, again, she's just trying to, she's looking at Danielle as a threat. Like you came in, I was the only one who got demoted. You obviously are a housewife. You took my spot. You want to play? Let's play. But it's not, I, I, I was really actually proud. I, I saw on Twitter last night where people were like, Danielle's a coward. She should have ran up to her. And I'm like, no, I feel like this is a woman who knows her temper. And she's like, instead of me dragging you <laughs> up and down this luau and ruining the entire party, I am going to exit and remove myself because I'm, I'm upset. And we don't want to take it to like a 10 right now. I'm at a five. You don't want me to get to it. She even said, I'm getting really upset right now. I don't even, I have to go. I have to exit. And I'm like, oh. Right. I have to say the greedy fan in me was disappointed. I wanted Danielle to go up to Jackie and be like, why are you talking about me all the time? Like I wanted her to like really give it to her because all Jackie has done is talked about Danielle behind her back. She's never had the guts to go up to Danielle and talk to her face to face and bring up these concerns that she has. So I would really love it if Danielle would just let her know what time it is and just like say, stop talking about me. I don't know why you're so obsessed with me. The fan behavior is way too much. Like, like she could really like go after Jackie if she wanted to. Um, so, but I do agree with you. I think it's great that Danielle knew to hold her composure and decided to leave. But at the same time, like, you know, I'm a real housewife fan. I want to see these women go at it. Also the editing, you know, the previews throughout the whole episode made it look like Danielle was confronting, um, Jackie by saying like, are you talking about me? So as the fans, we thought she was going to confront her. So then when she ended up not confronting her, I was so disappointed. I was like, production just played me. Cause I thought for sure Danielle was like confronting her in that moment. But she wasn't. So, but the good thing is, is I guarantee you, this is not the end we've seen of Danielle versus Jackie. I guarantee you things are going to get a little bit crazier as the season goes on. Plus, I have to say, um, I'm living 
for in the preview at the end of this last episode when Jack when Teresa told Jackie to get out of her face. I loved that. Reignite that. Like if anyone's gonna put Jackie in her place, it's Teresa. <laughs> it's Teresa Judice. And you know, there were two things that I noticed last night too. One of them was when Danielle started walking around. She's like, I'm gonna leave if I can't be a part of the conversation. And I was wondering just thinking about like the production of it all. Is it because they didn't want you to interrupt the conversation because they wanted that to be planted? Or is it because you just weren't a part of that conversation? So why are you guys talking about me? I don't want to, you know, insert myself. I, I, I didn't know where she was going with that. That was one thing. And then the second one was, oh, Danielle thinks I have an arsenal. Wait till she finds out what I know about her. I'm like, did you just act? Did you just activate Margaret? I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know. And, but on, yeah, I don't know. That whole thing is so interesting to me too, because I think at the end of the day, anybody who goes on reality TV, if we've learned anything from Jen Shaw, if you have skeletons in the closet, don't go on reality TV. Like you're just putting such a big target on your back. And especially when you're in a smaller community, like these girls are, everybody knows everything about each other. I mean, let's just be real. If Margaret does know the stuff about somebody, we've seen it before. She will bring it to the table if she feels like she needs to. Um, so that'll be a little bit interesting, but yeah, I, I'm kind of disappointed in the way that like the teams are so solidified right off the bat it feels like like I feel like we still need room to grow I would really love for Margaret and Danielle to really get to know each other I would like Melissa and Danielle to get to know each other Rachel and Teresa like I kind of hate when it's like so obvious that everybody's already picked their sides right off the bat like Margaret why are you coming for Danielle so hard like Rachel brought up the same concerns that Danielle did so like can we like spread the love a little bit like I don't know that's just me though well no that makes sense all right, so since you brought up the preview for next week's episode, I had to also ask you, what did you think of this oh moment? Oh my God, what was that, Adam? What was that? You know what's honestly, I don't know what's more concerning, the fact that he does that or the fact that he admitted it on live TV. Like, I don't understand the mindset behind that at all. Adam, I have so many questions. Why do they still have the PJs? Why? Why do well, you still have his PJs? Well, sometimes you keep articles of clothing from your past True. family members. And it, sometimes it's like the smell or it's like the, it's like it triggers like a memory. It's like sensory. Right. But yeah, I don't know why I don't, I mean, Louie didn't meet him. I mean, I, it, it did make me question and I have, I have Teresa on today. So I'm like, I, I have to ask her about it, but in my mind, I'm like, Teresa, like, how do you feel fans reacted to this? Because this was, people did not love it. A lot of people felt like it was very, what did he just say? Like, he was like, just to let you know, like, I love your nieces. I wear your father's pajamas at night. And I, I just do it because I want to make them feel comfortable. And I'm like, and you see Joe's face and he's like, what? <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> like, I, I don't think anybody was sitting there and was like, loving that like I think that all put everybody in a cringe state like we were like what did he just say and I, I just don't understand it nothing about it makes sense to me like why would you even want to put on those clothes and to walk around the house wearing them if I was the girls I would be like why is this man wearing my grandfather's clothes who's passed like that's so strange to me and if anything I feel like that ruins the sentiment of it because the smell's gone now those clothes are gonna smell like Louie and I hope they're washing them I mean like, it doesn't make any sense like I think you're losing the sentiment of having the clothes in the house because now this man like like you said who never even met him is wearing them around the house like I don't know the whole thing is so strange to me I need more context as to why why he's doing that because that just is very concerning if you ask me I need more context too. Yeah. And hopefully I don't get shut down when I ask the question. So we <laughs> will find out. I, I, you will be the first person I message after the interview and I'm going to be like, Ricky, I got the context. Yes. Got Spill the context. Tea, Adam. We need Spill the that. Tea. Tea. <laughs> yes. Well, Ricky, we know that you're extremely busy. So as always, I mean, thank you for, I was bringing up your um, Instagram really quick because I want everybody to go follow you considering you get the best interviews, some of the most iconic interviews. And if you're watching guys and you're not familiar with Ricky and his big fat blue verified check mark, <laughs> he is right here. And you can go check him out at Ricky Cornish. He will serve you with Speedos. He will yep. serve you with carpets and he <laughs> will serve you with the interviews. I mean, Thank you. Oh this my is God. just like, come on guys. Uh, definitely go check him out. 
You are so sweet. Thank you for the shout out, Adam. And seriously, I love having these little kikis with you. You are so much fun to chat with. And yeah, it's nice having these conversations with another stan of not only Jersey, but of Bravo in general, because my goodness, these Bravo celebrities keep us fed. So thank you for having me again. I will, I will absolutely come back anytime you'd like me. It's always a good time. Ricky, we appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you. And we hope you have a beautiful rest of your week. Until next Jersey hot, what the hell moment, which will be next Wednesday. Hopefully we see you then. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, my friend. Well, you know where to find me and I will see you very, very soon. All right. Bye, Ricky. See ya. All right, guys. So if you're not following Ricky, like I said, go check him out. And then I just wanted to pull this up at the bottom. Thank you so much, Laura Smart. Thanks, cuties. Everyone's saying bye, Ricky. Bye, Ricky. Yes. I love that everybody loves Ricky. That's why I'm saying go follow him. I mean, we get some great interviews, but Paris Hilton, Paula Abdul, these red carpets... It's wild. So yeah. Anyways, guys, don't forget that we are going live with Emily D. Baker, the number one badass legal commentator today at 4.15 p.m. Eastern. And then, like I said, I have Teresa Judice and Melissa Feaster from Namaste Bitches podcast. I'm doing a pre-record, so I'll drop that later this week. I will try to get the context of it all. But if you guys have any questions, I posted it in my community tab. Check that out. And if you guys are interested in any of the merch, go to upandatomlive.com. We will see you next time.